everyone. I'm at a racetrack in Spain to meet some really fast racing cars. These Formula E racing cars are special because they're powered by electricity. This is Robin and this is Sam. They're racing drivers for the Envision Virgin Racing Formula E team. They're also teammates. Their job is to drive around the racetrack in the fastest time possible and hopefully win the race. Today, the team are testing out their cars before the racing season begins. Testing's like practice and practice makes perfect. But first, we need to put the car together. First, the mechanics cool down the car with dry ice, which is a super cold gas. Then they place the rear wing into position and screw into place. The front nose of the car is attached next. Once the helpful mechanics have put the car together, it's time for the drivers to get ready. Racing drivers wear these big helmets to keep them super safe when out on the track. It connects to a neck guard, which keeps the driver nice and secure. They also wear these really smart overalls, which show their team colours. I guess that means I'm in the Envision Virgin Racing team too! Then the gloves go on to protect their hands. After a quick chat with the team engineer, it's time for the drivers to strap themselves into the car. First, Sam jumps in. Then Robin. Both drivers have different helmets, so the team know who's who out on the track. Robin has an orange helmet, and Sam has a white one. Formula E cars have detachable steering wheels. That means they can take them off so the driver can squeeze into the car and then put them back on again, ready to race. The mechanics do some last minute checks on the car. And then it's ready to get out onto the track. The pit crew are all part of the same team and they check that the track is clear. The driver gives a thumbs up to say he's ready and the crew give him the go ahead. Both Sam and Robin leave their garages and drive down to the pit lane. We're almost ready to race. Both cars stop at the end of the pit lane and wait to be told to enter the track. If a car is going past, they can't join the track yet, as that would cause a crash. Ready, set, go! Ready, set, go! This is the bit I've been looking forward to the most. Look how fast these cars can go! In fact, the top speed of a Formula E racing car is 150 miles per hour. That's as fast as the flight dive of a Golden Eagle. Now the other teams are out on the track, it's time to see who can get the fastest time. This car's misjudged the turn. Whoa, he spun out of control. Can anyone go round this corner correctly? Here's our friend Robin. I hope he doesn't mess it up. Way, he's done it. Well done, Robin. Formula E racing cars are powered by electricity, which means they don't burn any dirty fuel. This is much better for the environment, while still having lots of fun. 
It also means the cars are a lot quieter than normal race cars. Not only do the drivers have to drive around the track, they always need to be checking their energy levels, car temperature, and they need to be speaking to their engineers, all whilst driving. It's a real team effort from everyone. Look, there's a live map of where everyone is on the racing track. I think we've got the call to go back into the pits. The cars slow down and enter the pit lane. The pit crew come out to greet them. Racing cars don't have a reverse gear, so the team have to push the cars back into the garage themselves. Oof, that looks heavy. That's one in. And here's the other. As soon as the car enters the garage, the crew test the temperature of the car. It's a bit like when your mummy or daddy check your forehead when you're not feeling very well. It's a good way to find out how you're feeling. The car seems a little hot, so it's cooled down with these fans. I think Sam might be hot too. Formula E is a real team game, and it's not just the two drivers that do all of the work. There are more than 50 people in the Envision Virgin Racing team. There's lots of different jobs, like engineers, mechanics, or technicians. The crew have the incredibly important job of making sure the car is the best it can possibly be. And that means looking after it too. The car's worn all its tires on the track, burning all that rubber on the baking hot road so we need a fresh new set. This is the control room, home to the clever technicians and engineers. It's their job to keep a close eye on the car whilst it's on the track and come up with new ways to make the car go even faster. It's with these big headsets that they talk to the drivers when they're out on the racetrack. Here comes Sam now. This is his chance to talk to his team and chat about how the car is performing. They all work together to make the car faster so that they can win lots of races. After this meeting, it's time to make some small changes to the car. And then we're back on the track. Racing cars are super speedy, powered by a team will be testing out the cars all day on this track to make sure they are at their best when it comes to race day. I've had a great day here in Valencia with the Envision Virgin Racing Formula E team. Thanks very much to all the team. I hope you've learned as much as I have about these clean energy racing cars. I'll see you again soon. Bye!
Hello everyone. I'm here in London with this special double-decker tour bus. But it looks like something's missing from this bus. Wow! Look at that! There's no roof on this bus. I can see everything up here. There's loads of tall buildings to see in London. And because there's no silly roof in the way, you can see right up to the sky. Every year, around a million people from all over the world come to London and take a sightseeing tour with the original tour company. Each bus has its own tour guide who teaches the passengers all about special places in London and about the history of this amazing city. Today, we're going to go on a London sightseeing tour of our own. Come on, get going. Hop aboard. Glenn is the driver of this bus, and he makes sure he drives as smoothly as possible around the London streets. Right, Gecko. Would you like a job? Ooh, what sort of job? We need a tour guide. and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am your tour guide for today and together we're going to visit the amazing sights of London. London is the capital city of the United Kingdom and the city grew around the river that goes right through the middle of it. This river is called the River Thames. And today, our bus is going to cross the river on some famous bridges. Ooh, look at this amazing palace. It looks a bit like my house, but my garage is a bit bigger. This is Buckingham Palace. Does anybody know who lives here? I'll give you a clue. Her name is Elizabeth and she's been the ruler of England for over 60 years. It's my old friend, the Queen of England. Let's go and have a cup of tea. Hello, we're here to see the Queen. Uh, hello, Queen. Queen. Queenie. Queen! Queen! I don't think she's in. Queen! Never mind. Let's visit our next London location. Wow! This is probably the most famous clock in the world. This is Big Ben. And it's been bonging and telling the time for over 150 years. It's actually the bell inside the clock tower that's called Big Ben. The clock tower itself is called the Elizabeth Tower, named after my friend, Queen Elizabeth. Just next door to Big Ben are the Houses of Parliament. They're some of the most important buildings in the United Kingdom. It's where the main decisions are made on how to run the country. I just love being able to see everything from this open top tour bus. I'm just glad it isn't raining though. What's this? It looks like a giant fairground ride. Ah, this is called the London Eye and it's one of the biggest observation wheels in the world. It goes around very slowly but that's so you can get a proper view of everything around you. We're about to go over a very famous bridge. You've probably heard a song about it. I hope the song doesn't come true. It goes something like this. 
London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Build it up with silver and gold, silver and gold, silver and gold. Build it up with silver and gold, my fair lady. Phew, we made it. We're now on our way towards the tallest building, not just in London, but in the whole of Western Europe. Wow! It looks like it's touching the sky. That must be why they call it a skyscraper. The Shard has 95 floors, and there are 44 super fast lifts inside, some of which are double decker, a bit like this bus. Here's one more bridge. This one's called Tower Bridge, and it has two towers at each side. Amazingly, the middle part of the bridge can be lifted to allow ships to pass underneath. And here's the Tower of London. Lots of prisoners have been kept at the tower through history. There's no prisoners in there now, but this is where the crown jewels are kept. These are the very precious jewels that the Queen wears on special occasions. Now it's back along the embankment towards Westminster. We turn right at the Houses of Parliament and come past Downing Street, which is where another one of my friends lives, the Prime Minister. Let's pop in and say hello. They live around here somewhere. Ah, this is the one. Number 10 Downing Street. Prime Minister! Primey! Prime Minister! Oh dear, they must be out as well. I guess they must be very busy running the country. Oh well, back on the bus. We're now passing Trafalgar Square. The tall statue is called Nelson's Column. It was built to remember the hero, Admiral Horatio Nelson. And this is Piccadilly Circus. Before you get too excited, this isn't a real circus. The name Piccadilly Circus comes from the fact there used to be a big circular roundabout here. What a shame there aren't any clowns, tightrope walkers or trapeze artists here. Here we are, back at base, at the end of our tour. I've loved learning all about London today. See if you can tell your mummy or daddy an amazing fact about London now. Thanks very much to Glenn and all the team at the original tour for taking us around London on their amazing open top bus. We'll see you again soon. Hello everyone, Gecko here. I'm here at Wigston Fire Station to meet a vehicle that's a really big deal. Hold on to your hats, because here it comes. Woohoo! That is the cutest fire engine I've ever seen. This is the mini fire engine and it's used by the amazing firefighters here to teach children all about fire safety. This is Kane. He's a firefighter and the driver of this mini fire engine. It's got all the usual things you'd expect on board. Flashing lights, a siren and a ladder. All in an itty bitty teeny tiny size. But best of all, it's got plenty of room in the back for children to have fun rides. Look at that! There's a pretend radio for making emergency calls. 
you can really see just how small the mini fire truck is when it's parked next to its big sister. This fire truck is big and this one is small. Hey Gecko, want to go for a ride? I thought you'd never ask. Yes, please. The mini fire truck is powered by electricity. That means it's got a big battery on board that can be charged overnight. It's very easy to drive. Kane just puts his foot on the pedal and steers with the steering wheel. To turn on the flashing lights and sirens, he presses these buttons. Woohoo! We've arrived at the park. Kane, I think these children would like a ride. That's it. Get your special firefighting kit on. Jump aboard! Wow! We can fit loads of children in the back and even one in the front next to Kane. It's very important that you're safe in any vehicle, so the first thing you should always do is put your seatbelt on. This fire engine is so small that it's allowed on roads and footpaths. This is going to be a fantastic ride. Wave hello to everyone. After the ride, Kane teaches the mini firefighters some important fire safety lessons. This one's called Stop, Drop and Roll. Fire is very dangerous and if there's ever any fire on your clothes, you should stop, drop to the floor, cover your face and roll around. loved spending the day with this amazing mini fire engine. Thanks very much to Kane and all of the team at Wigston Fire Station. For now, it's cheerio from Gecko. Bye! Hello everyone! Gecko here! What a lovely day for a walk! But woohoo! This hill's a bit steep. <gasps> Mechanicals, are you okay? <sighs> I'm struggling a bit too. I should really get out of the garage more and do some exercise. Hey, the Mechanicals have hitched a lift. How do I get on? Hey. Wait for me! Hi Gecko, are you okay? Welcome to the Great Orange Runway. This is the halfway station. Halfway? 
You mean I'm not at the top yet? Wow! Now this is the way to travel. Put your feet up and get pulled up the mountain. This is a tram. It runs on rails and it's connected to a really strong cable which pulls it up the hill with absolutely no effort on my part. Phew! Well, hey, We've reached the top! What a view! Up here, there's a cafe, a play area, and even an adventure golf course. Now, this tramway is very old. The Great Orm Tramway was built in 1902. That's over 100 years ago. It was before most people had cars to get around in, and the tramway was used to transport people and their things from the town of Plandidno below up to the mountain called the Great Orm. Ahem. <coughs> hmm. Let's take a closer look at how these trams work. What do you mean there's no engine? Excuse me, James. If there's no engine in the tram, how does it move up the hill? Good question, Gecko. Well, as you know, the tram is connected to a really strong cable, and this cable is connected to a big winch at the halfway station. Would you like to see? Ooh, yes, please. This is a winch. Wow! This is amazing! This big winch is really strong and it winds the cable in, which pulls the tram up. But that's not the only help that the tram has. The tram climbing up the hill is also connected to the tram going down the hill. An invisible force called gravity pulls the tram down the hill. Gravity is what keeps us on the ground. Oh dear, Blue. That's gravity for you. It's always pulling us towards the ground, with sometimes painful consequences, eh, Blue? What goes up must come down. Back to the trams. The weight of the tram going downhill helps to pull the other tram up the hill. That means the tram doesn't need an engine on board. Wowzers trousers! It takes real teamwork to keep the tram running. The winchman controls how fast and how slow the trams get pulled up and down the hill but it's the driver on board the tram who gives the winchman the instructions. When the driver presses these buttons on board, a message is sent to the winchman to speed up or slow down the winch. Amazing! Whew! I'm exhausted. All of this learning has made me tired. I might have to leave my big walk until tomorrow. Thanks very much to James and everyone here at the Great Orm Tramway. It's Cheerio from Gecko. Bye! Hello everyone, Gecko here. I've got something amazing to show you today. Cranes! Whoa! They're brilliant at taking things way up high into the sky. If you've ever seen a tall building being built, then you might have seen a crane. They're not very good at hiding. They can almost reach the clouds. And they're able to lift heavy objects onto the tops of buildings. 
cranes are so cool! This is a 250 ton mobile crane! It's massive! And do you see the long arm that's sticking up into the air? Well that's called the boom! There's lots of different types of cranes, but let's see what makes this one special. Whoa! This yellow crane's got loads of wheels! Maybe as many as Larry the Lorry! This means it can drive down the road to all sorts of construction sites. They're places where buildings are built. But I wonder, how does it go under bridges with that really tall boom on top? That's it, Blue! You fold it away! This is Ian, and he's the operator of this crane. The crane can move up and down, and left and right, and it's all controlled from something called a cab. That's where Ian sits. He can use both of these joysticks to control the boom and the hook it has on the end. That looks like a fun job! Can you see what he's doing? By pulling the joystick in his left hand backwards, the boom is shrinking! Wowzers! The boom's made up of seven separate pieces, which all fit neatly inside each other. A bit like a Russian doll. Look at that! The boom is all packed up! These are called the outriggers. Just like stabilizers on your bike, they stop the crane from falling over when the boom is up. To get the crane ready for driving, we need to fold the outriggers away. Ian uses this control panel to fold them up, making them disappear inside the side of the truck. Bye bye, outriggers! The outriggers were sitting on special mats, which stopped the super heavy crane from cracking the floor underneath. Ian neatly packs them away at the back of the truck. Wow, that's brilliant! Now Ian can jump in the front cab and press one final button to balance the truck. Ready for driving! Can you see it wobble? Look, it's rising up! And now it's ready to drive! Off we go! Ian's had the call! And we're now on our way to a construction site to help the builders. Down on the construction site, they're building everywhere. But when the building gets too high, they all take extra care. Here to save the day is the massive yellow crane. It's time for the boom and hook to come and take the strain. Lift it high, lift it high, lift it high, high, high in the sky. Lift it high, high, high in the sky. Lift it high, lift it high, lift it high. Lift it high. Thanks very much to Ian and all the team here at John Such Cranes. You can subscribe to my channel by tapping here. For now, it's Cheerio from Gecko. Bye! If you love this video, tap here. 
so you're the first to know about my latest videos. Thanks for watching! Bye!